<laughs> bro, I'm trying. That those days. Oh man. The, and you saw the clip I sent you with Will Ferrell. Oh yeah. <laughs> Am I the only one seeing this? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> what are you doing, Derek? Nothing. You're doing nothing. <laughs> he said, yep, that's baby a couple times a week. <laughs> Make you think like you're going crazy. It's just like, wait a minute, what is going on? What am I doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think she's taking crazy pills. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> but that's a regular thing. Oh yeah, I mean it's hard, man. It's hard. Like, and I get it. You know, I'm I'm half the I'm half the problem. Dealing with my crazy ass, like all the things, all the things. Yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a regular occurrence, you know. If you got you got two kids and yeah, you're married to me, and <laughs> but do you ever feel that? Uh no, it doesn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Okay>. hilarious. <laughs> he said, uh, no. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm the problem. <laughs> I'm the problem. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just, I guess. I get there are moments. There are definitely moments when I'm like, holy shit, what's going on? This is a lot. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I don't know. I think I've I've gotten to a point where we've <laughs> we've been jokingly using this new phrase. Whatever. Whatever. Care. Whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Whatever. And like <laughs> Bailey claims that that's my like perpetual attitude where it's like I'm just indifferent. <laughs> I call it stoicism. She calls it indifference <laughs> she calls it irresponsible i don't know but uh we've been all of us all like me bailey and quill we've all been all three of us have been just kind of playing with this notion of whatever who cares yeah <laughs> who cares who the fuck cares i can't care enough i got yeah. plenty of other things to care about i can't <laughs> care about the fact that this damn laundry needs to be done right now whatever who cares I can't care enough that you got to wear dirty socks to school. You should have probably took them out your shoes and put them in the laundry basket. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? You know, you just gotta gotta be gotta be a little little. Yeah. Give a few less fucks. Give yeah. A few less fucks. You yeah. Know? That's so funny. How old Quill is six now? He's seven. He just turned seven uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's driving, right? You got him driving. Yeah, yeah, picked up his first uh, his first car. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, he's pushing that thing around town. Uh, What'd you get him? Got into like twenty seven accidents already. You know, he's uh, on the verge of having his license revoked. <laughs> already, <laughs> already, he's, he's he, Yeah, he was rough. He always liked to tumble around, <laughs> even it. when he was little, little. You his know? bumper, his bumper cars for him, bro. That's yeah. it. Yeah, like, he's not thinking about vehicles and safe driving and right of ways. He's trying to bump. Like that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to bump. Like, what you got? <laughs> Who are you? I am Quill. <laughs> it's asserting his presence. He picked up a little uh, little Jeep Grand Cherokee for him, you know. <laughs> we needed something big, something that was sturdy. We knew he was going to bump, so we got him something real sturdy. <laughs> you know, you need a little extra padding in this thing. Let's just let's get you up off the ground. <laughs> Give you something real old. It's a 1993, so it's all steel. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, man. None of that plastic, carbon fiber, 
fold when it hits stuff kind of no, like, like, like tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so funny. Man, he's seven years old. That's crazy. I felt like for a minute that he was the same age for a long time. Mm -hmm. But it was because of COVID, I think. Yeah. I mean, like it was during COVID, thing. I don't know. I was like, shouldn't that kid be like 10 now? I know. It's weird, <laughs> bro. Time is weird. It was weird. <laughs> I was like, how old is he? <laughs> he's, he's four, bro. He's he's five. Yeah. Yeah. I could have sworn he was. I could have sworn that nigga was at least fifteen. I know, you know, man. I could have sworn he was starting high school in New York. <laughs> nah, bro, he was like two when we were in New York. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he just turned two. First time you met him, bro. Like <laughs> he was barely talking. He was jumping on your bed. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was bare. He was bare. He was like Uncle Tommy. Can I jump on your bed? I just want to jump on your bed. That's all he wanted to do, man. He just wanted to go hang out at Uncle Tommy's house and jump on his bed. He did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Him and Nala. Mm hmm. Him and Nala. Nala's nine now, bro. She just turned nine. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I bought her this like super super high quality like raw real food, like unprocessed. No more kibbles and bits for Nala. What's it like, called? Yeah. Nom nom. Nom nom, okay. Nom 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 nom. Right, Cameron may say, hey, pause, pause, B, a pause. It's a pause moment, B. Yo, that whole interview was just laughs. The whole thing. There's, bro, I'm so, I, like, I was telling my friend who, like, he watches them every day. I was like, bro, like Cam, I forgot how influential Cam and Mace were. Cause mm -hmm. like, even when I was younger, I used to like, after I watched Paid in Full, I would try to talk like Cameron. Mm -hmm. And um, now that they're back, like they're very, like they're definitely the cool kids in school. Like yeah. they definitely create the culture and like they're arrogant and like, they just got swag, but like, it, it sticks, you know, mm -hmm. like they have, it's not just like arrogant, like just for arrogance sake. It's like, no, like I listen to that show. And then even in my head, I'm like talking to myself like them, <laughs> like, yo, yo murder, yo murder. You know, you like, I want, I want that nigga to come back. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, that that, that's, that's the nigga I want back. You know, that's Harlem. You know, I can't really do May so much. You'd be like, Cam, Cam. You'd be like, yo, you need to pause. You know? It's more nasally. He's like, hey, man, this nigga going to jail. You know? <laughs> what did he say? I was watching. I love this. This is such a random podcast. Yeah. But we, he was like, um, because they're, they're basically like they get they've got a lot of money from some sports betting thing like not draft mm -hmm. some some i don't remember the name but it's some they got a lot of money and so they they make picks and everything and uh <laughs> there was like right before the nba season opener i think mace had uh the warriors as winning the championship mm -hmm. and so then they the season opener happens the warriors lose to i think it was the Suns or something and um mace comes in what i love also is their episodes where mace isn't there at the beginning mm. like he comes in late <laughs> <It's hilarious>. <laughs> <laughs> damn it's like you know yeah that nigga he's on his way you know he'll be here shortly <laughs> It's hilarious. I mean, it takes a minute to piece together that three piece suit, bro. Like he coming in just looking. He comes in. Yeah, man, every time he's like got pastor. something. <laughs> yeah, Pastor Mays. And so he came in the next day, and they were they were talking about the games and the picks, and he was like, um, he was like, I got the Phoenix Suns going all the way, you know. And 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 Cam was like, Hold on, murder! Like yesterday, you just, you had you had the Warriors, my nigga. And he was like. Yeah, but that I didn't realize that you know Chris Paul. He said Chris Paul. You know it's like he said. Wait, hold on, murder. Like they didn't have Chris Paul. So what did you mean? He's like, I ain't like the niggas' attitude. 
I ain't like his body language. <laughs> 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 he said, you just changing your pickup mid-show? So I man, he said, it's like we making a deal, and that wasn't part of the deal at the beginning. He said, but, but Chris has been part of the deal. He's like, I... I ain't like his attitude. <laughs> I don't like his body language. <laughs> yo, your can your Cameron is on point, bro. That is so good. <laughs> I've been doing Cam for a minute. Cam is funny. Cam yeah. is really, really. He's oh my god. And that episode that I sent you was like particularly Cam. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I got a backup plan. If I man by 65, got me a wife overseas. You know, we over here <laughs> raising her up, you know. It was and it, no, he didn't say a wife, bro. He said, he said, he said, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely real with it. He was like, look, it, me and my uncle was talking about that. I ain't, I ain't gonna say which uncle, but me and my uncle was if if, if I ain't married by like 60, 65, we we got a plan B. And we we grooming a bitch overseas. <laughs> <laughs> you know she gonna clean my shit. She gonna worship me. She gonna cook. You know, and Mason, the the woman, stated like, "Yo, like Cam, and he's like, you so toxic, Cam. I mean, I'm not toxic. I'm not toxic. But he's like, Cam, I think you need to seek some counseling for this. <laughs> it was like, and he was just laughing. He was like, this nigga Cam ain't never changed." <laughs> He's like the same nigga. <laughs> In the lead up to it, he's like, I'm different. I ain't this, this, yeah, this yeah. wasn't me. This is me like four or five years ago. <laughs> I changed now. This ain't me anymore. <laughs> I'm different, you know, I'm different. <laughs> and he spent like 10 minutes talking about <laughs> Yeah. He so went weird. off. He went oh. off. Oh my god! It's so funny. And the other yesterday, they I mean they talk about everyone, but yesterday I guess the Knicks had, had lost or something. And the fir- and Cameron was like, "Yo, Spike, you need to leave, my nigga. Like you, you don't need to be courtside looking weird with your funny shoes and your big bug glass. Like get a skybox, my nigga. Have a party up there. You know he's like, because ever since you became a season ticket holder, you've been a jinx." <laughs> You been a jinx, my nigga. The Knicks can't win with you there. You annoying. You annoying. You man. and so then he, I was laughing, laughing, laughing. And then Mace came in late, and then Mace sat down. First thing he said is, "Did we talk about Spike?" He <laughs> <laughs> was like, he was waiting to get that off. He was like, "You need to go, my nigga. You need." To- <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god, that shit is great, man. <laughs> like they would, they remind me of a couple guys I went to high school with who were just a seizure Allen, and then uh, what was the other guy? But a seizure was the main one. A seizure, <laughs> a seizure. Uh, he was just so funny. He played football and ran track, um, and he just he had one of those personalities that was very like very big, very loud, very funny. I think he was Jamaican. Um, and he was really cool, um, but he would, you know, just big voice. So if he was in the cafeteria sitting around the table, it was him. He was the main one, but it would be him and a couple other dudes that'd be cracking off like that. And what was so funny to me about a seizure was like he had like three other siblings, and all their names like ended in Asia. Mm. So it was like a seizure, Larija, Marija, like Khadija. <laughs> 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 I, res- I respect the theme yeah i really do <laughs> no yeah no nah, yeah not nah, Caesar. Caesar's a good dude um but yeah he reminded me <laughs> he was funny <laughs> was, he, was he more of a like a mace or a cameron character he was more like he was more like mace because mm. he also had more of like a nasally voice mm-hmm. um he was just so funny oh my gosh those guys, those guys, <laughs> seizure. <laughs> yeah, you you grew up like just in the proximity of that influence, you know. Like I watched it on. Oh um, yeah, with New York. Yeah, I watched yeah. it on BET and MTV, and <clears throat> I listened to all the music. 
Cameron was one of my favorites back in the day. The whole Dipset crew, you know, even still to this day, I got I've got a friend named Cam, and every time I see him, I'm like, killer, come, come, killer, killer, killer. Yeah, come. bro. <laughs> every time I see him, like I can't even. It's like embedded in my psyche in the way that association between Cam and that song, and like I think for me, it's just like it's a California was influenced by like the Tupacs and the Bay Area was like thick. The culture of Bay Area was really thick mm -hmm. with like the Mac Dre's and the Keep mm -hmm. the Sneaks and mm -hmm. Mr. Fabs and E40. Mm -hmm. And uh, Too Short still popping when you were coming up? Too Short was still popping. Yeah. Yeah. I think this was like my era of B. I was in the Bay Area in 2004 to 2008 and I'm pretty sure this was when when Too Short dropped um, album number 12, album number 10, album number 10. And so, like, that was when, you know, Blow the Whistle was a big one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a bunch of people, like, Trap... Um, uh, oh, God, I'm blanking on his name. He was this dude from San Francisco that had this one song that was a banger. The Federation was another one. The Jacka was another one. But like this is just this is like the the hip hop world of California was just like such an eclectic experience from like top to bottom, <clears throat> and I've always been I've always been like a New York fan. I've always appreciated like the culture coming out of New York City, but like being in L.A. as a kid, I remember like you know the bullshit between East Coast mm -hmm. West Coast and like Fifty Cent talking shit and like you know just like starting beef with Ja Rule and everything like this the whole culture of hip hop just like over the 20 years or so from like the early 90s into the mid 2000 mm -hmm. <clears throat> 2010s it was like it's such an influential part of like how i received life and experienced life and still to this day mm -hmm. make sense of it mm -hmm. and i'm so far removed now bro like i can't even like i have no idea really what's happening in the hip-hop world today like i just i have zero clue zero clue and it's like a weird place to be where I think I've got to this point, we're talking about my son, right? And like generational stuff. <clears throat> and uh, like the things that my son is aware of in the world, like he's only seven, he, you know, he's driving his shit. He's, you know, being, <laughs> he's out here bopping people in his little Grand Cherokee, but he's seven, you know, he's seven. Oh, he don't even know yet. And he goes to this like tiny little private school here. And, uh, you know, he's relatively sheltered from things, but the stuff that he's aware of and the things that he wants to listen to, like we got Sirius XM, and sometimes, like, I'll be driving around. And I'll be like, oh, let's see what's on, uh, you know, Sirius XM Fly, the hip hop channel. Let's check it out. Let's see what's on here. And I'm like, I don't even know who this is. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what's going on. Am I old now? Is that a, is it <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I officially a, uh, what do they call him, a geriatric millennial? Like, oh, is that what God. The... <laughs> that's a phrase. That's a, that's a phrase, bro. Wow. That's a phrase. I'm about to be 33 years old next week, man. I know you've been through wow. but like it's just that that realization for me as you're talking about like dipset and talking about mace and camera like that was though they were massive figures of my childhood mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that was a long time ago that was like 20 was years like ago 20 years ago yeah yeah that was 20 years ago brad so i'm just like i'm thinking about it and i'm looking at my son and like the things he wants to listen to and i'll be putting on like every morning we start uh <clears throat> lovely day radio we mm -hmm. uh on spotify and lovely day, Bill Withers is way that's that's before my time, it's before your time. But like that's how I start the day, right? Put Lovely Day Radio on. Spotify takes us through a little journey of all the songs that are like sonically associated with Lovely Day Radio. And the first few times I put it on, Cool is like, I hate this music. Why do you always put this stuff? I want to listen to my music. And he wants to listen to things like, you know, Transform You by Chris Brown and like things that he's hearing in his hip hop class, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and that this like that, that realization for me that like, I'm hitting a point in my life, like there's a, I'm hitting a point in my life where like, I'm making it over this hill of some kind into an era where like, I'm not cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I was talking to a friend the other day. She's like, yeah, I'm just like, I'm so not hip anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, some, I was standing in the line at the, bar and the barista said, look, I like your, out I like your fit. And she's like, my fit. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like your outfit. Like it looks great. She's like, oh my out. Yeah. Thank you. 
and she's like, I realized that I'm I'm not hip anymore. I was like, I would have knew what fit was, but I was gonna say <laughs> she's really, yeah, she's really grounded. She had no hippie, no hoppy. She's feet stuck in the mud. <laughs> that's right. Hey, she's back there with the dinosaurs. Yeah, shit, that seems pretty obvious to me. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but like you know i think she the point was pretty clear it's like yeah, yeah i got on and she and and you know she's not on social media and 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 like you know watches tv that's not really relevant to the culture or anything like that but i was like yeah like there's just a it's different it's a different world like how do i navigate it at this like age where my jesus year you know it's like what am i what am i who am i how do i show up in this space <clears throat> and it's been a fun exploration that's why I started thinking about it, right? Like, how do people reinvent themselves as they go through these changes over the course of their lives, right? And I thought I started thinking about Deion Sanders and like what he's been doing, mm. Coach Prime, <clears throat> going yeah. from you know Mr. Flash, you know, quite literally mm. changing the entire face of the DB role on yeah. on you know on a, on, a, on a football team, <clears throat> getting them paid well, right? You know, I remember listening to an interview. He's like, look, you. You didn't get paid well being a DB in the NFL. Like you didn't get jack shit. My job was to get, I wanted to buy my mom a house. That's what I was there to do. And in order for me to do that, I had to elevate the role, right? Mm. And so he elevated the role to the point of prime time, right? Mm. And it was how he showed up. In the, in the in the sales world, we call that executive presence, right? Like how do you show up to the point where people see you and think, oh, that person knows what the fuck they're talking about, mm. right? It's the energy. It's the way you carry yourself. And that's what he did. You know, he he dressed good, he felt good, he looked good, right? He got paid good, he ate good, you know, you know the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, he had that era, right? That era of, of 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 football and him establishing himself. He had him a couple kids and he retired. And what did he do? He went into broadcasting for a while, right? So he like re he rebranded, he reinvented himself. There's still like the essence of prime, you know, as, as as he moves into these new roles, but like he reinvented himself. He's wearing a three-piece suit, sitting at the table with all the big heads, all the talking heads, talking about all the things. What do you say to Tony Romo? Just a quick little interjection. Tony Romo made a comment one one game, this was years ago, like 2006 or something, about someone tackling like Dion and they had missed the tackle. <laughs> and, and they put the and what do you think about that, Dion? And me and my brother laugh about this so much. He goes, he said, Tony, what's going on? You know, like, Tony, I tried to bury the hatchet with you. We both work at CBS. You know, when I shook your hand, I thought it was all good. What? He said, Tony, what's your record in the playoffs? He said, Tony, don't come to me. He just said, Tony, I got a gold jacket that I didn't buy. <laughs> he said, Dak says hi. <laughs> and bye. <laughs> Leave me alone, Tony. I love it. I love that so much, bro. He's I win. That's that's I win. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Like, you know, I'm a winner. I've been a winner since I'm I was a shoddy. I was I've been a winner since I'm a shoddy. And it's just it's not about football, it's bigger than football. I'm going I'm to grow these men up. I'm going to take yeah. these boys and I'm going to turn them into men. And that's how we're going to win. But yeah, man, he's he's been able to reinvent himself right in this era as a broadcaster and obviously moved into being a head coach for a football team. And I don't I think he might have even started in high school. I don't I don't. He started with um, Pee Wee. Pee Wee. Because this is all about his sons. It's all right. about. Well, I think Shadur is like the middle. So I think. Shiloh, whoever does the camera stuff is, I think, older. There's Shadur, and then there's one more mm -hmm. boy. And they have, there's two that are on Colorado, I think. And Shadur is obviously the star. But um, I think he started when they were kids coaching their peewee, and he's just been there. Like, Shadur has never not had Dion as a coach. Okay. Yeah. And so going into that world, right, and just choosing, like, this is what I'm going to dedicate my life to, you know supporting my children with the, this game that i love and they seem to love too and like watching that happen right he's going from peewees into high school into college and he's at what jackson state for a little while and he jumps into p into the pac-12 right like 
And he knew when he came into the Pac-12, he was going to have to turn it on. Like, it was going to have to be another version of Dion, right? And obviously, he's got, like, a branding and marketing team behind him. And he's got a whole a whole crew of people of people that are helping him figure out how to how to put this out into the world. But it's been it's been a brilliant thing to witness, right, of, of like the evolution of someone and their ability to take on whatever it is that this role is asking of them over and over again. So I share that with you as I as I kind of reflect right on my own life, but also and I think probably the most relevant to this particular time of year is that historically and you, you and I have talked about this a number of times. October, November, December turns into like shutdown mode. <clears throat> it's real hard out here. It's dark out. It's cold out. I'm not trying to do shit. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to veg and hibernate, right? Which I'm also still down for. But this year, <laughs> <laughs> this year I'm trying something a little different. And what I decided at the beginning of October, end of September, was that I'm going to embody a different persona. And I'm going to see how that shows up for me, right? Instead of allowing for, and I can appreciate, right? Like my, I'm a physical, you know, biological being <clears throat> that is in, inspired by, impacted by, informed by all the natural rhythms around me. And I will honor that to a degree. Right now, I'm running a test. <laughs> We're running a little test, right? How can I, if I choose to embody a different energy, if I make the commitment to myself to embody a different energy for the next three to six months, however long it takes, can I find myself showing up differently in the commitments that I've made, right? Or the goals that I've set for myself or the projects that I am interested in, right? Can I find a different energy? And it's been a weird experience to feel like I'm coming back to this place of what I've kind of played with is like, watch me win, right? Watch me win. And not win in the sense of like, you know, somebody else is losing, mm -hmm. but win in the infinite game. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing to show up and win no matter the circumstances and allow for myself to be informed and inspired by the energy of commitment to a desired outcome, knowing that I've got the whole squad behind me, right, of, mm -hmm. of, of God and of you know, Yogananda and Jesus and Mary of, of multiple flavors and very much so saying, all right, all right, crew, I'm gonna need some help. Let me dig, let me dig into the trenches here. Let me, let me dig up the treasure troves of, of spiritual resources and support. And I'm making a commitment in the dark of night that I will not fall. I will not falter. I will not lay and wait. I will mm. keep walking mm. through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And I fear no mm -hmm. fucking evil. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am committed to continue to walk this path and it's been fucking crazy bro like i i feel like a completely different person right mm. like i remember last year my birthday last year i was like i was done already i was like i'm good mm. i'm trying to chill i'm trying to just relax um the idea of any plans was just like not too much i was in the middle of finishing up a program this workshop that i was doing a, a four a four week program for folks and the last the second to last week was my birthday and i remember being like whoo I got to make it through this. It's going to be hard. Like, I got one more. You got, you got it, Mackie. One more. You got one more. And it's just like, it's a different thing. I'm choosing to like operate from within as opposed to using this, like this carrot to pull myself, you know, forward. Right. Mm. Which was, which was last year. It was like, let me just get through this program. Now it's like, no, no, like I'm going to bring all the, I'm going to bring everybody into me and I'm choosing to emanate a different energy this year. Mm. And it's been weird, man. It's been real weird. And it's shown up in a whole bunch of different ways where I'm just, I, I'm on. And so like, I'm bringing Dion into this conversation because I remember sitting, remember listening to his interview and this is all going to be related to Mason and, and Cameron here in a second too, because that's what we do. Uh, I'm listening to this interview with, with uh, Dion and he's talking about coach prime. Somebody's mm -hmm. asking him, I think, I think, I think you and I might've shared it back and forth. Um, and he says something like, look, co uh, co uh, prime, prime time, prime time w is a character, right? Prime time, like Dion is, is, is shy. He's introverted, right? But prime time, prime time was a, ne it was a necessity, right? And this is when he starts talking about like get, buying a house for his mama and, and turning things, you know, turning around the DB role and making sure that he makes enough money to be able to do that. 
He said it was a necessity. I saw it as a requirement in order for me to achieve the goals I had in my life. And so he turned it on. <clears throat> and I, and as I look at and I hear Cameron, right? And I look at and I hear Mace, like they are individuals who have found a particular energy within themselves that they decided to amplify and emulate to achieve a desired outcome, right? And then tying it into BRT, you taught me all about the animal work, right? Mm. And how we mm. dawn and doff characters, mm. we find the source of energy, the center of energy, and we emulate mm. that character or mm. a creature or an animal in this case, right? So Coach Mac is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Mac is back. <laughs> Coach Mac is back, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. <laughs> it's true, bro. And I, I kept thinking about it. I was like, all right, look, football season just started. This time of year, I used to be a fucking dog. Like, yeah. Like when did I when did I start feeling like I needed to just like close down and like again I get it there's natural rhythms I can appreciate that and I will definitely honor that to a degree but there is a part of me that realized holy shit like there was this year this time of year was like school just started you mm -hmm. know uh, football season just started I was fucking I was a dog I was killing niggas right now this was not the time to go down and sleep and rest yeah. like no this was yeah. the time to get shit done. Yeah. I was out here murking people, right? Like that was the that was the focus. The focus was who can I hurt today, right? Yeah. How can I dominate this field today? And that was an everyday occurrence. I'm in the gym, you know, doing double days. I'm up early. I'm, you know, uh, on the field early, staying late. Like it was one of those things where the mentality was different, right? Because I was committed. And for me, the reason, right, the why was... I was committed to getting out of my situation, right? In the moment, it was actually, I want to buy my own my house too, because like that was the information that I was gaining from hip hop. Of course, we're going to tie it back to that. Buy my mama house, right? I wanted to get rich so I could buy my mama house. I want to get rich so I can provide a life for people that never that I never experienced before. And so that was my commitment, right? I was committed to that. I don't give a shit about that now. Like, don't get me wrong. I want all the money, but not for the reasons yeah, yeah, why I wanted yeah. it before. Yeah. Now, I'm on a mission to fucking support save souls like that's like that's how it feels right it feels like i'm on a mission to identify support people pull people out of their situation wake people up bonk people on the motherfucking head slap people around like yo wake up there's shit to do around here we got shit to do time yeah. is running out right yeah. <laughs> and that's the energy it's a different kind of energy and i'm feeling it right like it's different it's different it's different so I think that's like the the appreciation that I'm starting to gather from all these different pieces, right? Like as I'm finding the intersectionality of everything that we've talked about so far and all the stuff that we do in BRT, it's the opportunity that has that has been awarded to me to be aware of and present with what's what's true for me, mm. right? What's true for me is that historically in the last 10 years or so, this time of year has been hard for a number mm. of reasons. I get tired. I find less energy. I find less commitment to things, yada, yada, yada. That's true for me. And I'm also the creator of my motherfucking reality, right? And I choose what it looks like moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so that awareness of that pattern, right? The thinking mind, we talk about that in the awareness series. We talk about that in the foundations of mindfulness. What the fuck is mindfulness, right? Like all of these things, being mindful of the top best hits, top 10 best hits. I tell myself that story of, Winter is hard, fall is hard, I get tired. It perpetuates into reality where I experience those thoughts because I am the creator of my reality. Yeah. My subconscious mind goes to work and says, oh, that's what we doing all right. Got you, nigga, we good, we got you. But not today, not yeah. today, right? Not anymore. I want to watch the moon, right? I want to be outside. I want to be in nature. I want to be cold. I want to feel it, right? I want to be committed to experiencing what it's like to move through the darkness. I want to be committed to mm. experiencing what it's like to be a part of the underworld that, that exists for us here in the Northern Hemisphere during this time of year. It's hard. Mm. But like this is the only place, the only time that I can be battle tested, right? If I can't walk through my own darkness, how can I support other people doing that for themselves? Mm. 
Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's an interesting time of year. Um and like over here right now, it's it, the weather's all crazy. I'm looking outside and there's flowers that are blooming because the mm -hmm. weather's been springtime uh, temperatures and you got f leaves falling off the trees and they're different colors. And it, it's just like it's it's kind of two two currents going in different uh, different directions mm -hmm. in the same river. There's a lot that's happening that would normally seem paradoxical and kind of like um, not antagonistic, but like kind of like. I don't know if it's concurrent, um, but like running up against each other. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all happening. And um, it's interesting to watch. There are bees out here, you know, mm -hmm. like it's it's almost November. Um, and a couple of years ago, we had snow before October. So it's just it's a it's a it's an interesting time of year where things are things are changing. Things are falling away. And I think the big thing that I'm taking away from what you said and I know from like what I'm going through right now in this this fall of, of my life is um is the how it's mm -hmm. like it, it, it's 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 the how of like showing up in the different energy um because I feel like there's a lot of sh like when I actually take a moment to think about it and like look at it and appreciate it I'm literally, my life is literally what I've written down, mm -hmm. you know, over the last couple of years. It has become my reality in very unexpected ways, um, which I think is is what makes it more beautiful. And so now when I wake up or when I'm doing my journaling and I reflect, uh, you know, I'm always thinking, you know, oh, what do I want to manifest, what do I want, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what, like outside of again, like we always say, we're millionaires. The check just hasn't uh, uh, cleared yet, hasn't hit mm -hmm. the bank account yet. Outside of that, um, I just want to wake up earlier. Mm -hmm. I just want to move my body every day. Mm -hmm. I just want to cook more meals. I just want to do more art. I just want to have a different perception on teaching and creating and performing and sharing. And it's not so much um, and relating. It's not so much um, what I want to do anymore, but it's like how I want to do it. Because mm -hmm. like the things that I've said I wanted to do, like I said, they're all here. I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, what I'm noticing is I've had a tendency since I remember it. It was football related. Um, it was... I think it was like fourth grade. Yeah. Um, where I, it was my first time. So I kind of, I guess that's kind of late for some kids. Like you were probably playing at seven, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So like my dad didn't let me play tackle football for a while. And um, so when I went out for this team, um, I, I went to like a practice and that was like my little tryout. And I, they had me a running back and I dominated. I dominated. But the kids were like a little smaller than me. Mm -hmm. Right. They were like my age and they were just like a little smaller. And me being me, I was like, no, this is going to be too easy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be bored. And my dad was like, you sure? And he gave me he gave me the free will. And I was like, yeah. And so they put me with the intermediate guys and they were way better than me. Mm -hmm. And I never got on the field. And I don't even remember that season, to be honest. Um, but I just remember, like, I should have started where mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. instead of saying, no, I want I want the challenge. I should have started where I was, learned how to run, learned how to play football instead of thinking, oh, I just want to play with the older guys. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I think there was like an arrogance, but also like a desire to be challenged that ultimately I think like saved my brain, saved my body in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, because maybe if I had played with those kids my age and I got that confidence, I would have continued playing and I would have gotten banged up more. Um, but at the same time, it's something like that I've seen in other aspects of my life where I feel like 
oh, if I get something too quickly, it's too easy. It's boring. I mm -hmm. lose interest. And what's wild is I've been doing that to myself for a long time where it's like, oh, if something is too easy, whatever it may be, I'm bored of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not interested. And so I disengage. And how it's like, no, bro, it's like, like, it, it, it's like you saying, you know, I came to win, you know, I'm here to win, right? I expect to win. I'm going to win. I am a winner, right? Mm -hmm. I know how it feels to win. I know how to think as a winner. I know what to do as a winner. I love that feeling. I know that process. So it's not like you start winning with that mindset and you're like, oh, I'm tired of winning. Mm -hmm. It's boring. No, it's like, you know, you're like, this is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. This is like breathing in and out. And <clears throat> I think I have created this self-imposed um, mental block of like making shit unnecessarily hard, mm -hmm. unnecessarily challenging, because for whatever reason, when I was younger, I was like, oh, this is too easy. Now I'm bored. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you just start doing all these different things and you're not noticing at the time. But it's like at a certain point, everything's getting boring. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, oh, now you're running out of things. You know, and so now it's like the beauty of that is like I, I it gave me a, a wide array of experiences, but now it's like honing in on all of these things and just like instead of operating, I'm gonna use a cooking analogy, instead of operating like a, a fry cook or like like I'm sauteing or like something, we gotta get it out, we gotta get it out. Mm. It's it's stewing. Mm -hmm. I'm letting things stew and simmer. And that was something my friend David, um, he he demonstrated for me unknowingly um, when I would go out and stay with him in L.A. is because like one, he did like to make stews and he decided <laughs> like I had that visual, but also his creative process was and is so slow. And it would drive me fucking nuts because I'd be like, let's just get it like we have something. This is good. Let's do it. And you've seen this with me when it comes to just ideas. It's like, let's do it, right? And both of you and him are like slower, you know? Need more time to gestate and, and digest and process. But like staying with him for as long as I did and like witnessing it day in, day out, um, it was infuriating. But when I got some space from it, I finally got some appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, oh, there is no need to rush anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no need to like push, 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 push. It's like be in the flow and just let it stew, let it simmer. And when it's time to serve, the food's going to be ready. And don't think that that process is boring mm -hmm. because it, there's so much happening that if you just relax your mind a little bit and quiet your thoughts, get comfortable being still, um, do some breathing, all the stuff that we, you know, we we go over and we do as a part of our daily practices, but also as teachers, um, you can you become more aware of all the different ingredients, the different temperatures, the different layering of the seasonings, the marinades, the different flavors, and there's an endless array of things to find beauty in, to find joy in, to find inspiration in, and to find energy in. And I'm I'm saying all that now, like that stew is me. Mm -hmm. Because I think one thing that I did in 2018 was because I have such a need to like get it out and, and do and like um, when this whole journey of this pretty much started initially um, was I didn't allow one. I, I wouldn't have been able to bear it. It was too it was too much energy. It would have been too uncomfortable, but I wasn't able to just stew and simmer with what I was experiencing after my awakening. Mm hmm. I had to share it. I had to get it out. And I don't think that was the wrong thing to do. But I think because like my energy over the last couple of months has been just like, oh, boy, I'm fucking tired. Mm -hmm. like, I feel exhausted in a lot of ways. And I don't do like that much comparatively speaking, but I'm not trying to speak comparatively because it's more so it's not even what I'm doing externally. Mm -hmm. It's internal. There's like mm -hmm. a lot of shit that's like I don't wake up and work a nine to five, mm -hmm. you know? But I am. The hell was that? This <laughs> is your mic. <laughs> um, I don't think it's mine. Um, but internally, it's like all day, all night, nonstop work. 
thoughts, feelings, processing. It's nonstop. And it's deep work and it's it's multi-layered and it's it's a stew. It's different realms of existence and reality. It's waking life, it's dream life, it's emotional body, it's spiritual body. And I think like um one thing that I have just I have I I I've continually life has like been asking me to do it. It's just kind of like stop, stop, like pull away you know, like uh, disconnect, like go within, stop, 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 stop doing so much. And um, I think now it's like, it's at a good balance where the season I'm in saying all that to say the season that I'm in right now is I feel like it's, it's tuning into the how, how and when and why and where I share the experience of my stew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of just ladling it out to everyone, mm -hmm. you know, because I definitely depleted. I, I emptied the fucking, um, the pot and I didn't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Um, because this work, I was talking to this, this dude about it last week. Um, was like acupuncturist, physical therapist. He created his own little breathing technique. That's super simple and really, really, really effective actually called the true breath. And all you do is really simple. All you do is just breathe in three times and you hold after each breath. So one, two, three, and you just breathe into your belly three times and then you release after the third one. And it's like, you do it three or four times and you're instantly relaxed. Um, mm -hmm. It's like very, very, very quick. Um, but he was talking about, he was like, you know, this work can be draining. This work can be exhausting. This work can can really like, take from you and and if it's not what you're supposed to do you're going to get burnt out mm -hmm. and i think hearing him say that i realized i was like oh i i made that jump from kind of actor to teacher slash healer so like immediately mm -hmm. um i didn't give myself any time to think and process like i am now to see is like is that actually what i want to do you know, it's like it was just an energy that I was feeling that needed to come out of me. So the energy needed to do it needed to come. Pause. Pause. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, that's wild, yo. That's wild. Yo. Yo. I knew it was coming before it came. Oh, pause. Pause. Yo, I love those guys. <laughs> I love those guys. Oh, Cam and Mace, Cam and Giles. So Mace and Beth, we love you, man. We love, love you. you. Love you. Love you. Shit. Um, <laughs> um, forgot what I was saying. <laughs> that energy had to come. It needed to come oh, through you. Oh, yo, this is too much. <laughs> this is too much. Yo, yo we, need to, we need to like shut the cameras off or something. This is too much right now. <laughs> Like niggas is wild. <laughs> this is so funny. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think like for me taking that time to sit back and figure out again the how of sharing that energy, mm -hmm. it's it's been interesting um, because I think it's like it's not what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And I think this is kind of like I've let it's been like a trail of cookie crumbs. Um, for me, because I like sweets, um, <laughs> leading to this, <laughs> but like, you know, I I love group work, mm -hmm. um, but what I'm realizing is, I love it when like when we teach a breathwork class, and we're the we're the we're the teacher, we're the facilitator of a group, we are holding the space, mm -hmm. and I think the the shift for me is, um. Because at a certain point, I thought I could just rattle group classes out. Boom, 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 boom. I don't think I can energetically. Mm -hmm. You know, I think personally that would exhaust me mm -hmm. um, because it's not just like doing a, a personal training session. Mm -hmm. Like it's a different kind of experience. And maybe I'm not built for it in that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's like when I do it now, instead of being the sole facilitator, like I have a class in a couple hours. I'm going to extend the invitation to everyone involved to consciously hold that container for themselves and for each other, mm. right? Because when they leave the session, they got to hold it for themselves anyways. 
-hmm. And so it's partly for me to say, hey, to myself and for everyone else to not feel this expectation, I'm here. I am kind of creating this. I'm kind of like creating this invitation for us all to create this container together. I'm just here as the one sending out the invitation. It's the signal, you know, mm -hmm. like you got on Instagram from mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. But once you receive it, we're all creating this thing that we don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be some beautiful container, some tapestry together. It's not just me. It's not just you. We're all doing this together. And like knowing that and stating that, um, I think is like one way that the how is going to manifest into, into reality because it's, it's the same for everything that I do, you know, everything that anyone does, it's like, okay, what's the intention? Mm -hmm. And getting really conscious and aware of the intention, like you said, those thoughts, they become your reality. So it's like, if I am engaging in a relationship, whether it's a business relationship, a friendship, a romantic relationship, a familial relationship, stating that at the beginning, as or not yet at the beginning, but like making it known at a certain point, like, this is how I'm coming into this. This is how I'm showing up. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one that's going to carry everyone's burdens and everyone's um everyone's baggage you know mm -hmm. i'm not going to alchemize everyone's pain and stories you know i'm not going to hold the space for everyone i'm not going to do that you know we're going to do that mm. right we're going to do that together and you know each each dynamic has a different language for that each context has a different you know um energy for that but i think the the when it comes to like this work like the big shift in the how for me is like understanding, okay, I may not be the type of teacher healer that I've seen or like perceived them to be. Um, I may be a little different in the way that I approach my work. Um, and also like sharing with the people I'm working with how I work mm -hmm. and how I want to work with you. Um, and so, yeah, that that's been like a big shift for me. And today's going to be the first time that I'm actually going to do it. Because um, I just had that call last week. And I had a big breakthrough in my Reiki class, um, my Reiki one training on Wednesday, where I was like, I, I, I was honestly like, I was, I was, I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this. Mm. I was just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this. Mm hmm. Um, but there was, there was nothing like else that like made itself apparent that I'm supposed to do. And so like, I was in that weird space in between. And so I was meditating on it and journaling about it and talking to some friends about it that I trust. And we're also going through similar, uh, things over here. And I, what I came to is like, what I just shared is mm -hmm. like, I think it's the way you've been doing it that you're not supposed to do anymore. Um, and like the expectation that you have with that, mm -hmm. um, that's what is no longer needed. And that's mm -hmm. what's no longer um, serving you in this capacity. And so it's like, and that was, that was the big thing was me realizing, cause I know this is also eclipse season. We're in what, there's the full moon lunar eclipse tonight. Mm -hmm. in Taurus um, is, and Taurus is all about stability home wealth you know sensuality pleasure but like really tending to one's own garden and um very like close proximity uh well-being close to home and i think for me one thing that is disrupted that home internal home dynamic was this like relationship that i had to endings and things mm. coming to an end and how this week I'm like, well, there's a, it's nothing ends. Mm. <laughs> I was like, ending is just a, it's just a shift. Mm -hmm. It's literally just a shift. Like there is no end until there is. And I don't even know if like I can comprehend what that is <laughs> because I think it's so much bigger than it's not death. Death is not the end. It's not like, extinction like it's not the things that we i don't know if it's a black hole i don't know if it's like a universe exploding i don't know because even then i'm like i'm sure there's some shit yeah 
Like, so I think it's all going all the time mm -hmm. and just accepting, excuse me, like, um, like coach prime, you know, you're going through different iterations. You're going to shift mm -hmm. at a certain point. He ended his football career. He became an analyst, mm -hmm. right? He stopped doing that as much. He became a coach, right? Like there's just different. Now he's, he's got like, you know, he's missing a toe or like a foot, you know? So he had to get like two toes amputated because he had some blood clots or something. So it's like the end to his, this, this body mm -hmm. and his relationship to being one of, if not like, he's probably one of like the top five best athletes in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, now he's limping. Like he's not, he doesn't have those feet anymore. Literally. Mm -hmm. That's a shift. Mm -hmm. um, and how it's always shifting. And just like getting on, and it's nothing new. We talk about this, but I think when it comes to like foundational aspects of one's identity, it can feel like an end. Mm -hmm. and it can be this dramatic thing and all this stuff. But I'm like, yeah, that's fine. You can feel all those emotions, that that grief, that drama. Something's shifting. Mm -hmm. Something's being released. But just understand, Rue, that it's not it's not an end. You know, the book isn't closing. You just go into a different chapter. Mm -hmm. um, and that for me is, has, that's what's been alive for me is like accepting and appreciating that shift and, and just seeing where it's taking me, seeing where it's guiding me instead of trying to steer the ship so much um, and white knuckle the, the steering wheel. It's like, well, where are we going? Mm -hmm. Where is this taking me? And, and also, last thing I'll say about this is, and again, nothing new, but just like, I mean, I, I think the last time I was over there, I, I left this image on Quill's Etch-A-Sketch was the spiral. Mm -hmm. And like how that shit just keeps going. Mm -hmm. Keeps going. And we're so programmed in this country to think like, you know, it's linear, it's uphill, it's one track, or it's forward, or it's down, but it's linear, right? It's like single track. And it's it's always just spiraling and just swirling and just going around and around and around endlessly. And one, you know, you you run up against a lot of shit that you've run up against before, and you think, oh, I thought I I had dealt with this. I thought I addressed this. It's a new version. It's a new opportunity to learn it in a different way. You're a new person. You have new eyes. Like, who's this? How is this version of you going to show up? Um, instead of thinking. For me personally, oh, this again? This is mm -hmm. easy, you mm -hmm. know. It's like, no, 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 this again. Yeah, what? What's here this time? Mm -hmm. Instead of, oh, I've seen this, mm -hmm. you know, I've been in this situation. I know how this. No, no, no. You have no idea. You've never been here, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, what's happening in this moment that you can enjoy and appreciate? Mm -hmm. So that's 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 where I'm at in this fall. Um, and it's it's interesting because mm -hmm. it is different. It is different. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, it's a season of transition, right? A season of change and falling away. Old things, old identities, old beliefs. And I think uh, the appreciation of everything as new, right? I think the beginner's mind, uh, you know, in the Buddhist tradition, humility and just generally speaking the ability to step into a situation and know that this may look familiar but it's not the same and, and i can be humbled by this moment even though i see i think i have the answers for this um but yeah the season of change the season of transition and i think that's the that's the reality of 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 what it means to be human right at any given time we are experiencing some form of change some form of transition I think it's more pronounced during this time of year because we just witness nature transitioning so hard and so heavily that it is a mirror image for us. And we reflect back, it reflects back to us what we see within ourselves. And, and so it becomes much more of, a, of an opportunity for like self-assessment, reevaluation, uh, you know, redirection in some way, shape or form. But uh, yeah, no, I'm appreciating the, the re realization of 
the image that you had in your mind of what it means to be a teacher or a healer, not necessarily ma matching who you are, right, as a person. And I think that's the reality for anyone, right, in any role. We step into something because we think that that's what we want because of some other image we saw of somebody else informing our own beliefs about ourselves. Oh, I can, I can do that too. I want to do that too. But it's never going to be the same as that person, right? Like Coach Mac is not Coach Prime, right? Uh, Rua is not whichever spiritual teacher you inform that informed your belief to show up as a, as a teacher, right? Um, it's 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 a constant experience of what it's like to be you in that time and space and that's the unique opportunity of anyone stepping into any role is that this is yours to own and to create for yourself and it's never going to look like anybody else's it's your fingerprint right it's your fingerprint of that moment which is a beautiful thing there's one thing i wanted to share and and then um you know we could probably wrap up here is is this idea of um holding space and this idea of of creating an opportunity for people to hold the space with you i think is an incredibly beautiful thing because what it does is it creates autonomy for people it puts them in a creator role as opposed to stepping into something looking for someone to save them which tends to happen especially in the teacher student diet dyad there tends to be this idea of there being a superiority complex and that person is here to save me in this situation. But to take that and flip it on its head and say, no, no, I'm not here to save anybody. We're going to do this together. And you're helping me as much as I'm helping you to create the space in which we can all experience whatever we are here to experience today. And that's really powerful because it uh, it 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 breaks the pattern, right? It breaks the spell of oh, I need to go to somebody else to get the to get the support that I need, right? Obviously, there are people and places and things that are going to offer things that we need that we don't necessarily know exist within ourselves already, for sure. And we all have the power to to care for our own shit. We all have it in ourselves to be able to take care of our own things and support ourselves in a variety of ways. And what you're gifting people in this class in a couple of hours is an opportunity to, to realize that they have everything they need within them. And not only do they have everything that they need within them, they also have the capacity to create something that can hold more people beyond just them. And so it's the community, it's the ecstasis and it's the, it's the, it's the catharsis all happening because of that opportunity that you're granting people in a community environment as they come in for a breathwork experience with Rua, the dynamic teacher, Who's changing up the game? <laughs> the game is—is is this on the right side? Can you hear me? It's on—it's on the wrong side. <laughs> is it on the right? It's on the right side now. There, you, there you go. <laughs> the game, the game is, uh, the game is changing me and all of us. You know, it's like, I think that's something that. doesn't get enough acknowledgement in this culture when it comes to cultural shifts mm. or contextual shifts is like we like to say i mean and i saw an instagram clip like instagram is so interesting because you can just catch like thoughts basically mm. just like thoughts because there's so much shit right there's so much shit that you just you just click it and you hear someone say a sound bite. There's so much endless, literally. And so I hear people in interviews now saying like, I don't know, I heard this somewhere the other day. Whereas like 20 years ago, someone would have had the reference and the source and they would have remembered who mm -hmm. said it. But now it's like we're hearing so much shit. It's like. If you have your quotes, if you have your reference, great, but I get it. Like we're listening mm -hmm. to podcasts and YouTube and like conversations in real life. There's so much so you don't always know but there was this dude who um he was talking about how um um damn just oh god what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck oh yeah he was saying you know like um he said everyone that grows up in 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 the west is basically living through the lens of a white male psychologist mm. <laughs> that's the perspective through which everything is pretty much viewed and dictated in a lot of ways like from marketing 
to how you raised your family, to relationships, to religion, to uh, being an eight, not religion, atheist, whatever, um, to nature. But he's like, a lot of our life is dictated by a perspective that was determined and created by a white male, Western minded psychologist. Mm. And he was like, and you see how that's going. <laughs> right he said you see how that's going it has us disconnected he says it has us thinking we need to divide and conquer it has us with these superiority complexes and these hierarchies and he went on this other list but i want to speak to the the superiority complex where like when we say in this context um yo they changed the game right yes and at the same time it's like we're failing to acknowledge that the game is also part of that experience mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And ev like, sure, let's say 50 Cent changed the game, right? But 50 Cent didn't change the game without Ja Rule. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent didn't change the game without Jay. 50 Cent didn't change the game without uh, without Game. He didn't like he didn't change the game without Dre, without all his predecessors. He didn't change the game without the state of hip hop where it was at that moment, without Kanye. Like, it wasn't just him changing the game. Mm -hmm. Again, he was in this flow. He was in this 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 certain path at the right time with the right energy. And he and the game danced together in a way that caused everyone to be like, whoa, mm -hmm. what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. And I just think it's something that I want to acknowledge more when it's when I'm thinking about life as a whole. It's like, I mean, teaching is 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 more of like, you know, um it's it's more specific, um, but it's like life as a whole is always changing the game on us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And especially now, again, I'm looking outside. I'm reminded about how there's flowers, right? My natural environment, the game it's playing is changing. There are flowers that are not supposed to bloom until spring. There are bugs and insects that are out here that are supposed to be hibernating, right? There are things that are not meant to be dancing together that are now dancing together. They're now partying, right? That game is changing around me. The game has changed and I'm just a part of this. I'm just a witness and I'm just experiencing the changes that are happening around me. And if I can tune into that process, right? Which when I look at it, it looks a little confusing. Mm -hmm looks a little conflicting. It looks a little paradoxical. But if I can tune into that, the red leaves on the tree that are falling on the ground and turning orange and brown and the azaleas blooming and the bees buzzing and the frogs hopping, if I can tune into that, right, I can begin to tune into the changes that are going on in the game within me, right? And that's infinite. Mm -hmm. That's an infinite spiral. That's over and over and over and over and over again. And so I just want to, I just wanted to like, like, you know, give flowers to these flowers that are blooming. <laughs> yeah. I always talking about giving people people flowers before they die, which I love. But I want to give flowers to the, to the flowers. I want to give flowers to the nature that is literally changing. Mm -hmm. Like fall is not fall the way it used to be mm -hmm. in this country. Kids, I mean, I know you grew up in 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 Cali, but like. Kids don't have snow days anymore because they have online classes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the excitement of being a kid, and I like because I work with kids and I see this now, and I'm like, wow, I mean, it's not like there's nearly as much snow here in DC, but like even in other places where there is, it's like the excitement of waiting up late to see if they're gonna cancel school. That doesn't really exist anymore. Mm. There's always gonna it again, it's a change. And just appreciating that and then saying, okay, well, instead of trying to control that, instead of trying to profit off that or benefit off that or extract from that, it's like, how can I just dive into that change, strip myself of whatever preconceived notions I had before and just express and show up as a part, that's the dynamic part, as a part of that change. Mm -hmm. And that's also the scary part because I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, I don't know how today's session is going to go. I don't know if anyone's going to show up. I hope someone does. 
Um, but I'm also fine if they don't. Um, but just taking that leap into it's so weird. Again, it's paradoxical. Taking the leap into the unknown, which is change, which is the only constant. It's the only known in life. So it's actually the safest bet you can make. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's the only one that's guaranteed. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, but it's like, again, it's a ment- it's a perspective shift. It's a, it's a paradigm shift. Um, and that's what that's what this dude, his name is Andrew. That's what he was talking about. Cause he has a, that, that I was talking about last week about um, um, getting burned out as a, as a teacher and a healer and working with a lot of people mm-hmm. um, in these ways, he was saying, you know, he was like a lot of traditional techniques, you know, like a lot of the ways breath work is taught and all that stuff. He was like, it takes too long. He was like, people need, an immediate shift. They need an immediate transformation. They need to be put into that state of safety and relaxation. And then you can begin, like, you don't want to tell someone who's dying of thirst, all the benefits of water (laughs) (laughs) and how it's, you know, made up. You want to give them some water Mm -hmm. so they can drink and so they can, you know, quench their thirst. And then you start to tell them about the benefits of drinking water daily. He's like, so you need to provide something that's transformative immediately. And I was like, damn, I've never even thought about that. And he's right. Like, you need to create an instant paradigm shift. And that starts in the relationship, in the mind, in the body, in the emotions, in the mood, and with the breath. Um, All shit that we cover, all shit that we know. But again, back on that spiral, just a different, different time around the wheel, seeing it with new eyes, hearing it from a different perspective, makes it hit a whole lot differently like wow yeah and then applying that to myself applying that to oneself and seeing the shift immediately it's like wow Mm -hmm. it is it is possible to change immediately it is and again it's just it's the decision Mm -hmm. it's the choice it always it always comes back to that You are the creator of your reality. I am the yeah. creator of my reality all the time. Yeah, man. Beautiful conversation, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. Likewise. Love you. Love you too. Have fun today. Thank you.